What's happening inside the carburettor to produce an issue like this? Each time the throttle trigger is pulled to rev up the engine, it just bogs and dies. Well, in this video, I'm going to give you a quick remedy for this and some knowledge behind it. Welcome to the Repair Specialist channel. I'm Craig, the owner and creator. And having been in the trade for around 30 years, I now make videos relating to the diagnosis and repair of small engines and machinery and how things work and why. And in layman's terms, using clear visual explanations to help you gain a deeper understanding and a firmer knowledge base. Why? Because knowledge is power. So let's get to it. And supporting this video is a free download leaflet of how to tune your chainsaw. There's a link in the description below that will take you onto my website where you can download this, as I've said, completely free. The best of it is, is it's printable and you can take it into your workspace with you and tune your chainsaw at your leisure. So now I'm going to give an explanation as to what's going wrong with this chainsaw, as to why it's doing this bogging down, and then after you've gathered this understanding, we'll go on to the remedy. And it's this understanding that will make the remedy much more meaningful. There can be many causes, by the way, for a chainsaw bogging down. I'm just going to go through what's causing the bog down on this chainsaw, then offer the simple remedy that can correct this problem. It may be not in all cases it will, but mostly it does. Let's take a look inside this chainsaw at its engine and carburettor. And let's start right at the beginning. There's that constant airflow right through. It creates a suction pressure right up the main jet. This suction pressure draws fuel into the main jet and out into the Venturi. And this is now atomized fuel. And so it's this atomized fuel that's now combustible inside the engine. But what's happening inside the carburetor to produce an issue like this? It just bogs and dies. Well, everything's working fine with the throttle itself. The plate is indeed opening with every pull of the trigger. But for some reason, that's not resulting in what should be happening. And that is a higher flow rate of air being drawn through the venturi of the carburetor, drawing out a greater amount of fuel to support higher engine revs. Well, certainly in this case, with incorrect fuel adjustment screw settings, where the high screw is screwed too far in, even with the throttle plate wide open, there's no extra air going through the carburetor because there's only so much fuel allowed out of the main jet. And that amount is enough for idling speed, there just isn't enough fuel for higher engine revs. The engine's not going to draw in a maximum amount of air. So it's a knock-on effect. We need the air to draw out the fuel, but if the fuel is restricted in some way, then the fuel is going to prevent the engine from running at a maximum, and therefore prevent maximum intake of air. So in a nutshell, whether this throttle plate is either open or closed, there's only the same amount of fuel going into the engine that's sufficient for idling only. And so now, if we want to correct this, then it's worth trying to adjust the H-screw outwards anti-clockwise slowly until the problem subsides. And in this instance, it's sorted. So to understand how that corrected the problem, we need to look at how the main jet's fuel adjustment system works. Fuel is drawn into the main jet out of the metering reservoir above and down into the venturi. But the amount of fuel that goes this way has to pass through a very small orifice at the top. And we can see just how small this orifice is on the carburetor itself. But the amount of fuel that can pass this small orifice may be adequate for idling revs, but it's not enough for maximum revs. A supply of fuel from this hole alone would cause the engine to bog when throttling. So this fuel needs to be supplemented, and that's where this fuel tube comes in. As you can see, this is connected to the main tube and has a wider orifice at the top. This is the orifice we're talking about. It's much larger than that on the main jet tube. So under normal engine running, fuel would enter this tube and then join the main jet fuel. 
So at this point, it supplemented the main jet and there's enough fuel available for high engine revs. So the high screw protrudes into the carburetor body from its adjustable screw head on the outside all the way through to its specialised end that protrudes into the fuel tube. The more we screw this screw inwards clockwise the more it's blocking off the fuel that would supplement the main jet. And in doing that, the high revs would go from running correctly like this to more like this, which is usually said to be running too lean. And whilst this seems like the engine's got more power, it's usually considered as over revving. And of course, if we continue to screw in and over adjust, we're gonna get this bogged down because it's now blocking off way too much fuel. So the obvious remedy for this is to turn the screw anti-clockwise out to let more fuel down. Okay, so I hope this helped give you an understanding of the H screw on the carburetor and how it can prevent and remedy bogging down. Here's the full version of the video if you'd like to see it. Thank you for watching.